Gentlemen, we are back with another episode of MGTOW Money. And today is your lucky day. Today, we are going to discover the Holy Grail, what I call the Holy Grail of financial freedom. Because what we are going to do today, we're going to do a formula, I alluded to it last time, and specifically, we are going to determine your magic number. But before that, though, of course, let's not forget this is MGTOW 2.0. We, I don't have any paid sponsorships and paid discussions of, um, that I'm hearing on some other channels of, of space aliens and women, women writing in about their emotional needs or whatever and their feelings about men or men writing in about some failed relationship or marriage that they have. That's not the point of these podcasts. The, the, the point of these, this channel is dedicated to actionable steps for you, my fellow MGTOWs, to increase your options and choices in life. And specifically, that means mastering your money. No longer being a slave to your money, you're the master of it. So today's topic is discovering your magic number. And from the last broadcast, you had some homework to do. And you were going to be determining and writing down two numbers. And I hope you did so. If you didn't, go back and listen to the most recent broadcast that I did. But specifically on that last video, you need to determine how much do you need for your basic needs. And specifically when I say your basic needs, of course, we're talking specifically about shelter, utilities, food, internet. Shelter, utilities, food, internet. What is the monthly recurring expense for those four items? So once you've got that number, once you've determined, okay, to the penny, the number is, you take that number and that's how we're going to determine your magic number. So let's work through an example, shall we? Take the number, hypothetically, let's say it's $1,000. It's going to be $1,000 a month that I need to cover those four basic needs that I know if I have my four basic needs covered, that I'm okay. I'm not, I'm not living, living in a lap of luxury, but everything's going to be all right. So $1,000 a month in my hypothetical example times 12, a one year period is $12,000. Now here's the key. I'm going to take that $12,000 times 25. So I'm taking $1,000 a month times 12, $12,000 times 25. 25 giving me a grand total of $300,000. Now, of course, it goes without saying you can easily convert this into your home currency, euros, Australian dollars, Thai bot, doesn't make any difference. Maybe you're dealing in Philippine pesos. Maybe you're dealing in Canadian dollars. It's irrelevant. You're going to do the exact same thing. In other words, again, regardless of how much money you've decided that you need on a monthly basis, you're going to take X amount of dollars times 12 times 25, and that's going to give you your magic number. So again, let's work through another example. Let's say that I feel like I need 2,000 euros, for example. I'm going to take 2,000 times 12, that's 24, times 25, and that, of course, is going to give me 600. So I know that I need 600,000 euros as my magic number. You say, what, what is the significance of this magic number? What does it mean for me? After I get this amount, what does it mean? Specifically, it means once you hit your magic number, once you accumulate your magic number, you, my friend, you, my MGTOW brother, are financially independent. You are a financial God. You are a, you are a God walking among men at that point. What I mean is, is that you don't have to work anymore because you know, deep down psychologically, your basic needs are covered. Your shelter's covered. Your utilities are covered. Your food is covered. Your internet is covered forever. I mean forever for as long as you live. Effectively, what's happening is, 
as long as you can draw approximately a 4% return on your money from a pool of money that you might have, that will generate enough money to cover your entire life. So that's what that 25 actually equals is a 4% return on your money. So again, it's a very simple concept that you just need 25 times your annual expenditures for the basics and you will be financially free in terms of your ability to, well, let's see, do I want to work this job or do I want to work that job? Do I want to be a computer programmer or maybe I just want to be, become a, a painter or a poet or a philosopher or maybe I only want to work part-time or maybe I want to take a year off or two years off or maybe I want to become a teacher and get paid substantially less money than I'm being paid today, but, well, that gives me better hours or more time off, etc. The point being, once you hit your magic number, the possibilities increase. Your options, your choices increases exponentially. I'm speaking from my experience and many, many others. Furthermore, I can tell you there's nothing more financially freeing and psycho and feels psychologically better when you're going into your work, no matter what it is, no matter how much you might like it or dislike it, there's nothing better than walking in and knowing, hey, I can walk out of here anytime. You don't have to be there anymore. This takes it to a new level. If you really are having an issue with your boss and you really want to walk out, you can feel like, hey, no problem. I know my basics are covered. I know my shelter, utilities, food, internet, that's all covered. I'm covered. It's good. So we now know the magic number. Let's get to the next number that we were talking about on the last video. Specifically, I was talking about determining your cash on hand, trying to figure out, all right, how much money do I have? I'm not talking about money that's owed to you from a third person. I'm talking about money that you have that's readily accessible to you. This is very, very important. I read a statistics that I, that I hopefully is wrong that referenced that 62%, at least in the United States, could not access $1,000. So 62% of the American population did not have access to $1,000. If that's you, okay, I get it. No problem. We're going to work through that. But that is not a lot of money. $1,000 US dollars is not very much money in today's world in the year 2017. We're going to move way beyond that though. So if that's the type of situation that you're in where you have a relatively small amount of money, no problem. I'm going to reference you, though, back to my earlier videos where I said the first thing that you're going to do, the first principle that you've got to start working on is paying your debts. And so if you're the type of person, you've got debt and you only have a small amount of money, please go back to one of my earlier videos where I discuss some specific ideas and specific techniques of starting with your smallest debts, paying those off and con continuing on. Hopefully, you're not one of those people. Even though you might have only a small amount of money, hopefully you are debt-free today. Hopefully you have no debts and your debt load is zero because we're going to take this to the next step. Even though you might only have a small amount of money, you now have something to start focusing on with laser-like focus. And that something is, of course, your magic number. Remember that very, very simple formula that I just gave you a few minutes ago. So once you have that magic number, you can focus on it. Now, again, before you start focusing on the magic number, can't emphasize enough, get the debts paid. Clear your debts. You want to get to zero debt load. I mentioned it before, credit cards in particular, but all forms of debt are, it's a form of heroin. Just like presumably, if you're a MGTOW, you've made a commitment, hey, look, I'm staying away from women. Then you need to make another commitment, I'm staying away from debt. I'm staying out of debt. I'm going to do whatever I need to do to stay out of debt. It might be difficult sometimes. It might be stressful sometimes. I might have to really cut a lot of corners, but I'm going to stay out of debt. That is absolutely critical. You get your magic number. You get out of debt. 
You take that small amount of money that you've determined you've got and you start building on it. And you stay laser-like focused on, okay, I might only have $500 and I might I might not I might need to build this up to $300,000 or whatever that number might be for you. But you can do it with laser-like focus. I'm speaking from experience. Furthermore, let me throw in another little personal anecdote for you. Do you know what my magic number is? I'm not going to tell you exactly what that magic number is, but I'll tell you this. It's a lot less than $1,000. It's less than $1,000 US dollars. Yeah, that's right. Me, I can live on a lot less than $1,000. And no, I don't live in a hovel. And no, I can promise you I'm not walking everywhere. I have an automobile. I do have insurance, etc. So the bottom line is it can be done. But first, you got to get the debts cleared off. And number two, then you got to get that magic number finished. So with that said, let's give you some homework in terms of how we're going to get that magic number, how we're going to start chipping away at that magic number that might frankly seem insurmountable because I know many, many times in my life it did. It seemed ridiculous. I'm never going to be able to do this. This is what you got to do. Here's your homework. I want you to make a list of everything that is sellable. And I mean everything that you can sell, and I'm talking realistically that you can sell, that you can turn into cash relatively easily and quickly. So let me just give you some examples. Let's say you've got a watch. Let's say you've got a motorcycle. Let's say you've got an extra car. Let's say you've got some sort of jewelry or I I don't know, just some sort of tangible item that, you know what, you really don't need it. You don't use it that often. It doesn't mean that much to you. Again, speaking from my own personal experience, I own a watch. It, it, frankly, it cost me several thousand dollars. It it seemed good at the time. I, I was very happy with it. I still like the watch, but you know what? I really don't need it. And frankly, I'd rather just have the cash, you know, and that maybe, maybe that's me. If you, if you're a watch guy and you love watches, then don't sell anything. But I bet you there, I bet you there are other material possessions that you have that you can turn into cash. And by turning into cash, you're going to be that much closer. You're going to be chipping away, chip, chip, chip away at getting that much closer to your magic number. So again, your homework, you're going to make a list. And you're going to start the process of getting rid of some of that stuff, if you will, that's cluttering your life. Let me leave you with this final concept. There's only a few things in your life that are really material goods that are really generating most of the happiness. Let's look at the 80-20 principle. In other words, there's only a few things, one out of five things, that's actually generating much happiness. Most of us just have a lot of mediocre stuff that we hardly ever look at that sits in the closet most of the time. So start getting rid of that stuff that's sitting in the closet, that's sitting in a drawer, and turn it into money and get yourself pushed closer to your magic number. Gentlemen, I appreciate you listening. As always, hit the subscribe button if you enjoyed what you heard. And just as importantly, hit the like button if you found this information useful. Finally, until next time, this is John Galt, out.